from the social and economic vision, let's let's move on to the politics of it all because he has hinted to it in the past. His kind of reluctance for posts, or his kind of not having the priority for posts, but for work and working for the people and the system. But today he laid that out and spelled it out quite clearly. Was there a message to those who are hankering for posts, who are clearly making their ambitions known, that he would rather stay away and work? And that's not the more Im most important question. But the most important question is, how do you empower people? Well, look, I uh, do not claim to have. Uh, a very we are analyzing it, sir. You know, I, I do not claim to have a very extensive uh, uh, interaction with Mr. Gandhi over all these years, but the little that I've studied him and the little that I've spoken to him, you know, he believes that the future of India lies in creating a million leaders at every level. And so, therefore, when your mission is to create leadership, and when I talk of leadership, it is not only political leadership, but younger leadership across the spectrum, it is really about igniting minds and not about chasing you know, positions of power. And therefore, I think uh, younger people in the Congress party or younger people who want to get into public life uh, should realize that they are there with a mission. There, there should be an objective to try and change. And a position really becomes an instrumentality in doing that and not a means towards an end. Because what he said was very interesting. He said, if you're waiting for one person to change the system, even Manmohan Singh Ji, the Prime Minister, will not be able to do that. You can keep waiting. So the message was clear, change the system. And maybe the message was directed more towards those who are saying now they have paid back the debt of the state and the <laughs> they are ready to pay back the debt of the country, who are just so openly positioning themselves and jockeying themselves for the post of Prime Minister. And here is a man who is deciding to step back and see the larger picture. Well, that's precisely what I've been trying to tell you guys in Prasar Bharti also, that uh, only that amount of reform you know, which can be absorbed, you know, should be attempted because reform is an incremental process. You need to reform in a manner whereby you are able to carry everybody along. And unfortunately, you know, when you look at some of the other developmental models which are being touted uh, around and you go into the depth of those developmental models, you will find them completely hollow. For example, on social parameters, you know, because after all, it is not only about GDP. GDP is very important, but there is a gross national index of happiness also. And that gross national index of happiness comes when the standard of living of people at large gets uh, alleviated or elevated. So therefore, as a practicing politician, you know, you need to be cognizant of, the, of that and uh, try and create an enabling environment which then empowers people in order to lead a better quality of life. Actually, he said something very interesting in his speech that we are a very complex society in a very complex country. Absolutely. Let's not try and look for simple solutions. Just a couple of more questions before before we yeah. let you go. One thing, what, what he said was that there is no Prince Charming who is going to come. There is no way an individual can change the system. Let us not look for short instant fixes, solutions to our problems. He was clearly positioning himself for a long haul, clearly trying to position himself more as a philosophy, political thought. What his detractors would say is that when in short term, you need to keep winning elections. Long term is a long term story. It's maybe a great story, but that's a challenge. Yeah, but the reality is in the short term, the Congress has been winning elections. The reality is that you had an incumbent prime minister in Mr. Atal Bihari Vajpayee in 2004. The Congress fought that election, uh, did well, constructed the UPA. In 2009, you know, the BJP and some of our other opposition parties, you know, put people forth. We had Dr. Manmohan Singh, you know, our numbers increased, you know, and we've been running a successful coalition. So therefore, on the electoral mass of it, you know, we've done pretty well. I don't think there's a a uh, contradiction or a contradistinction between the two. But the larger point that he was trying to make, and you know, he uh, picked on the 73rd and the 74th uh, constitutional I mean, amendment, which really devolved uh, power to grassroots institutions. And there, if you look at the success over the last two decades, you know, that was an initiative that nobody was very sanguine about. But you implemented it, and today, you have people in the panchayats, the block committees, Zilla Parishads, municipal corporations, you know, a host of leaders okay. and a lot of young women, you know, who've come forth and participated in public life. So that's the challenge. Create leadership at okay. every level. Okay, Manish, this one is a lit little difficult. Yeah. <laughs> 
see. Forget that you are a congressman and a minister. As an analyst, you look at the speech. Was he really, and the difference is known, the contrast is known, but has he positioned himself in sharp contrast and in quite a decisive manner against the major rivals from other sides, say, for example, Narendra Modi, in today's speech? He has come across and said, this is me. You know, I have been uh, asked this question, you know, possibly a uh, hundred times in the okay. last hundred days. Then it shouldn't be so difficult. Uh, so, really. therefore, <laughs> so, okay. so therefore, you see, there's, there's a fundamental uh, and an erroneous assumption which underscores this question. You know, has the BJP really decided to put somebody up front? You know, I have not heard as to whether they've taken such a call. And presuming even the if The same they, applies for Congress. Know, yeah, presuming even if they take a call, right? We do not decide our policies, our programs, our approach to the people based upon whom the opposition decides to put up front. You know, we will go to the people on the strength of the vision that Mr. Rahul Gandhi has articulated, the work that Dr. Manmohan Singh has done over the past nine years, or his government has done, and the successful manner in which Mrs. Sonia Gandhi has not only led the Congress party for 15 years, but held a coalition together, which is, you know, at, at, in the easiest of times, also a very difficult task. Okay, just one more thing. Do you think he has really answered all those people who had, who kept on complaining and saying, we don't know Rahul Gandhi? You know, has, uh, he, has he come out and told and kind of published to everyone, whoever cares to read that fine print, Okay, this is the Rahul package. Well, you know, today in the morning, I was uh, doing a similar interview and somebody asked me uh, a similar question. And my answer to that is that some of us, you know, uh, try and put our views and thoughts across by interacting with eminent anchors like yourself, while others allow their work to speak for themselves. And Mr. Rahul Gandhi, over the past nine years, as a member of parliament and then general secretary of the party, in charge of mass organizations, has overseen the transformation and the restructuring of the younger uh, organizations of the Congress. And that's a model for everyone to see. He's opened the doors of, of these organizations, which is precisely what he was talking about, opening the doors of Indian politics, Indian political parties to a, a much wider spectrum of people. Yes, so therefore, I think in addition to his words, people should also look at what he's been able to achieve. Okay. And a juxtaposition of the two would give them a fair read of what Mr. Rahul Gandhi this, is all that's about. That's my last question. He also said that he has been much misunderstood. Maybe it's his fault. He doesn't do this very often, what he did today. And he said, maybe I should do it more often. Can well, you get uh, him through you for an interview to well, do that? Uh, well, <laughs> in the sense that uh, I can always uh, try and request it, but uh, that's a call which ultimately he has to take. And I think, uh, you know, this criticism that the Prime Minister does not speak or the Congress President does not speak or Mr. Rahul Gandhi does not talk enough, you know, is completely erroneous because if you look at the itinerary of any of them, on a regular basis, you know, they're talking to huge swaths of people. There's one thing in the, about doing an interview, but I think in politics it is equally important to have a direct interpersonal contact with the people and as leaders, you know, that's, that's, that's fundamentally important. And that's what I think the apex leadership of the Congress has been doing, which makes a lot of other people nervous who possibly spend a lot of time in television studios. Manish Tiwari, Union Minister for Information and Broadcasting. Pleasure to have you. I am not studios. here as the Minister for Information and Broadcasting. I'm oh, yes. here as a the, Congress as a, leader. As, 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 as a, a guest, Congress leader. As, as a guest of a very eminent anchor. Okay. And I congratulate you, you know, for uh, the, all the effort which the whole team has put in uh, to make News Night you know, a, a, a success. And I hope. Uh, that this keeps rolling and we are able to find that golden mean which should characterize our natural discourse. Thank you very much, pleasure. Allow us to grill you or question you more often thank and you. thank you.